Hello everyone, today is um, the Yudzain Betamuz fast, it's uh, July 17, uh, Yudchet Betamuz actually. Uh, yesterday on Shabbat was the 17th day of Tammuz and it was delayed to today. And it's a day of fast, it's a day of mourning. I want to share with you some ideas, some uh, explanations. Uh, why do we fast in this day? What happened uh, in this day? So we a little bit understand... Um, why do we do uh, the fast? So first of all, our rabbi says that there's a certain time during the year called Ben HaMetzarim, which starts today. And this time is the hardest time. This time is a time that a lot of uh, bad things happen to the Jewish nation through all the history, and still happening. Uh, that's why every Jew needs to be more careful on this day. We try to not go to uh, dangerous places, uh, to places that uh, a person could, uh, can be harmed uh, more likely. Uh, we try to avoid it in those three weeks because we know uh, there's a certain type of uh, energy of uh, danger, judgment in those days. But Yudzayn B'Tamuz this day uh, was a very special day. It's already started um, when Am Yisrael were in the desert. We were in the desert Moshe Rabbeinu, uh, in the sixth day of Sivan, which was the day of Shavuot, as we know it today, he went up to the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, and then he needed to come back. And according to the calculation of the nation, he was uh, late, which was not true, but that's what they, their calculation, they misunderstood him, and they saw that he's not coming. And they did something that we all know about called the golden calf. And it's, it's, it's a lot to explain what is that. It's not just an idol, an idol that they worshipped. It's a lot more than that. There was an actually a, a soul inside that idol. The soul of Bil'am, the father of Bil'am. And it was very complicated. There was a lot of black magic involved in this uh, golden calf. And our rabbi said that this was one of the biggest sins in the whole history. Right after the sin of Adam Arishon, that was the second one. And Am Yisrael basically, the Jewish nation basically fixed the whole world. And at that day, uh, everything went down back to what it was when Adam Arishon sinned. So that was a big disaster. And uh, Moshe Rabbeinu saw it. He was shocked. He took the tablets that he just came to gave it give it to the nation, and he broke the tablets. He also had a very uh, interesting and important reason doing so. <clears throat> and after he did that, uh, this day became a very sad day. Uh, it's the day of the golden calf, and this is the first thing that happened. And this day, it was exactly Yudzayin B'Tamud, the 17th day of Tammuz. If we count from Shavuot, sixth day of Sivan, forty days, it's going to be exactly the the 17th day of Tammuz. The second thing that happened in this, uh, in this day, um, a lot later, was um, the Matzor on Jerusalem. Matzor means the captivity on Jerusalem. The, in the Second Temple, the Roman Empire, they uh, basically captured Jerusalem. But before they did it, Jerusalem had a very strong walls. They were surrounding the walls. They couldn't get in, but they made... Something called a matzol means there's no nothing coming in, nothing coming out. And it's happened to be that at that time, when there was a matzol, uh, there was no food. Because, uh, you know, you have food inside, but if you cannot take nothing from outside after a long time, you just can't live like that. There was no food, there was no uh, water, there was uh, hunger in, uh, in Yerushalayim. And the day that they broke the walls was the day of 17 of Tammuz. So the 17 of Tammuz, somehow until that day, they could live inside Yerushalayim. There were rich people that could, you know, uh, give some food to people. But after that, Yudzayin B'Tammuz, they could break the walls. They got inside and it took them three weeks to basically burn the temple, which is Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of Av. <clears throat> Two temples were burned in the same day, um, and 
this is what happened in Yudai and Ben Tammuz. That's why we are mourning in Yudai and Ben Tammuz because that was the day, the biggest disaster that happened. Because when the Romans came inside, they basically killed everybody. They did a lot of bad things. It was, and the and the Beit Hamikdash, the temple, basically was slowly, slowly destroyed until the 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 top, which was on Tisha B'av. Uh, but everything started from the 17th day of Tammuz. That's why this day. Is a day of mourning. It's a day of uh, danger. It's a day that there is judgments on the Jewish nations every year. It started, like we said, in the uh, golden calf, and the second uh, thing that happens is the uh, breaking the walls of Yerushalayim. Another thing that happened uh, on Yudzain Betamuz in the same time uh, before the, the before the uh, walls were broken. At the same time, what happened is that uh, Beit HaMikdash, the temple, was still functioning. People would bring korbanot, would bring uh, uh, sacrifice, and we know that Am Yisrael, our nation, our life back then, at least, was uh, because of those sacrifices that we bring. Yeah, this is would make a protection to the nation. This is would protect us. Would gather us together, will bring blessing from above down because there is Korbana Tamid, the sacrifice of Tamid that uh, we used to bring every morning one lab for the whole nation to um, to um, basically clean all the sins of Am Yisrael. That was a very important thing happening every morning. And after a while there was no anymore there was no lambs anymore there was no sacrifice because they couldn't there was no lamb. everybody ate all the all the meat because they didn't have what to eat so they came up with an idea when they didn't have any lamb to bring as a sacrifice for korban atamid so what they did is that some people went up to the walls and they were making sense a certain deal with the romans down there to give them money and they will, you know, tie a, a, a lamp to um, to that uh, rope that they sent and they will take it and they will give the money. And that actually worked. And that's how the Korbana Tamid, this sacrifice of Tamid, was continuing again and again every day. And this was basically protecting us before breaking the walls. And... The day of Yudzayin Betamuz, basically before the walls broke, what happened is that Butal Atamid, basically there was one day that we didn't have that sacrifice brought in into the temple. The reason was is because the Romans understood. In the beginning they, they, they got money so they say fine, but after that they understood why do we need every day a lamb, a sheep. And then someone told them, someone from from dear circle that if if they gonna continue giving us uh, this lamb every time we're going to basically uh, they, they never gonna win they never gonna uh, basically overcome Israel because this is protects us so what they did is instead of giving that lamb they gave uh, a pig and this pig it says in the Midrash that we were we thought it's a lamb we were taking it up and then in the middle we just saw that oh okay this is not a lamb anymore this is a pig they understood uh, why do we need it for and uh, basically at that day uh, there was no lamb there was no korban atamid so this is another thing the third thing that happened in Yudzain Betamuz butal atamid so basically after 400 years or actually 420 years of bringing sacrifice every day, which is protecting the nation, that day of 17th of Tammuz, there was no sacrifice whatsoever in the temple. And that's a big deal. For those who understand Kabbalah and understand what's the meaning of sacrifice, this is a big deal. So this is the third thing that happened in this day that we fasting. The third thing that happened is Saraf Apustemus at Torah. There was a guy, his name was Apustemus. That was in a little bit different time when the Greeks were taking over. <coughs> and uh, this guy, Apustemus, first time a non Jew comes and is successful burning the Torah. 
Now, the Torah is the heart of the Jewish nation. Basically, there's no Jewish without Torah. If you go ask a few Jews, what's connecting us? Yeah. Uh, for example, there is a Jew from a Yemenite Jew and and an Ashkenazi Jew, a Sephardic Jew, uh, you know, someone from uh, from Spain, someone from uh, Russia. What's connecting someone from Morocco? This, they each one of them they have a different language, they have a different culture. What's connecting between us? It's one thing is our Torah. We have the same traditions of Torah, Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot. All those things are connecting us together. So, basically, what happened is Afustemus, first time in the history, someone is successful taking this heart of the Jewish nation, which is the Torah, and burning it in public. That was a big disaster. That was a very hard thing for our nation. We needed to remember that, and it's happened to Hapi in Yudzayin Betamuz, the 17th day of Tammuz. So that's the fourth thing that we are mourning for, the burning of our Torah. <clears throat> the fifth thing uh, that Chachamim said uh, that happened in this time is Hu Amad Tselem Ba'echal means uh, the Romans when they came into Yerushalayim and the first day, 17th day of the Moors, they came into the temple, they didn't burn the temple yet but they took an idol and they put this idol inside the Holy of Holies which is the most holy room in the whole world that only the Kohen Gadol, the big Kohen, is allowed to go in um, once a year on Yom Kippur and they just did uh, this uh, this thing, this this they, they just took this holy place and put an idol which is the the opposite uh, of what the of the holiness of that place and that was that was a, a big um, that was a big disaster as well therefore <clears throat> uh, we are keeping laws of mourning in this day Yuzayn Betamuz and by doing that basically we are sweetening those judgments, this uh, hard, those hard times, because being happy in those times in Yuzayn Betamuz, let's say if we could eat today and make like barbecue and you know eat whatever we want, if we would do such a thing, first of all, it's a sin to our culture and our na nation, uh, not remembering those hard days that we went through, but also according to Kabbalah, that would be a problem because. We, according to Kabbalah, basically, this time, uh, because it was a very hard time for the Jewish nation, and it was the success of the other nation, our enemies, our mazal, our luck is very down, and the negative powers, they are more strong in this day, in those, in those times in general, especially in this day. By being happy and eating and uh, uh, living our life, we basically giving them powers. We're giving them more energy. We're giving them more control. That's why in those days we keep uh, we keep ourselves uh, more like not 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 being too happy. We keep ourselves in a mood of mourning, uh, doing those customs of mourning. Uh, for example, today is only not eating and not drinking. But through those three weeks, we have different laws of mourning that Bezat Hashem, we're going to go through, we're going to speak about it. Up until Tisha B'Av, which is the real day of mourning, uh, which we have uh, five different things that we don't do on Tisha B'Av. It's more strict because that day was the, the top, uh, as we said, the peak. So that's why uh, it's important to keep the laws of Yudzayin Betamuz, keeping fast today. Uh, there's a lot of questions about the fast that people ask me. Um, can I, uh, for example, we know that this fast is called Tzom Hakal. It's an easy fast. Now, easy does not, not mean that it's easy. For some people it's very hard. Easy means that <coughs> it's not so strict like Tisha B'Av and Yom Kippur. Especially this year that Tisha, that Yudzayin today basically uh, is um, was delayed. Needed to be on Shabbat. And we know that there is a rule every time when a fast is delayed is less strict so that's why for example ladies that are pregnant and even not pregnant uh, breastfeeding or even not breastfeeding only two years yeah 24 months after birth they don't have to fast today uh, they're exempt from fasting today people that feel bad 
means they are sick a little bit, uh, they need to, you know, be in the bed. Even though there's no danger, they can, they, they, they can, they are healthy, healthy enough to, 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 to fast. Still, because it's an easy fast, it's not so strict, therefore, they exempt also from fasting. Um, a lot of question comes to me about what happened if I, uh, I ate, okay, up until I heard this video, I didn't know that I need to fast and I ate. Uh, so that's it. I just missed the fast. No, you can continue from now on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, if in the middle, by mistake, you made a you made a mistake and you ate something, you drank something. Uh, okay. Now you can continue uh, and fast. Also about brushing your teeth in the morning. You know, we know that in Yom Kippur and Tisha B'Av we're not allowed to brush our teeth because Yom Kippur Tisha B'Av is very very strict fast. But today on Yudzayim Betamuz, according to Rabbi Vadi Yosef, we are allowed to brush our teeth. We have to be very careful to not uh, swallow any drop of water, but we are allowed to brush our teeth. And I know it helps uh, a lot of people. For sure, if a person feels that he uh, can faint or feels very bad, he can drink something, he can eat something. But then he can continue fast uh, as everyone and we have some uh, changes in the prayer for those who pray uh, three times a day. Shacharit Mincha Avit. We take the Sefer Torah twice on Shacharit and Mincha. We also say and we add a part uh, in Shomea Tefila. This is a part of, of prayer that we add there. Anenu Avinu Anenu, which is basically a special uh, add that we add on a day of fast only for those who are fasting. And... Basically, in this day, we should try to um, remember the remember those times, learn about those times, uh, looking, seeing lectures about uh, Ben Ametzarim, the three weeks, and uh, basically keeping this fast. Uh, and everybody, each one of us, as much as we can, uh, pray for our nation, because they say if the temple was not built in our days. It means if we had a temple in our day, days, it would be destroyed as well. It means we don't have this zechut, we don't have the merit that the temple will be um, built also in our days. So we have to look around and see uh, the, all these disasters basically that happened to the, to the Jewish nation, all the bad things that happens to us even today, and feel it, feel the sadness. Uh, you know, we, we need to have at least one or few days of sadness also uh, uh, because the Torah say that people that know how to mourn yeah, on the bad days, they remember those hard days, they would be also those who are happy in the happy times. So, So, whoever mourn on Jerusalem, he will be the one that merits to see the happiness Zad Hashem in the coming of Mashiach. So, uh, take advantage of this time uh, doing the right thing. There's also a very nice custom called Tikkun Chatzot. Tikkun Chatzot, we know that usually Tikkun Chatzot is made on midnight. We sit on the floor, we read, it's in every Sidur, in the beginning of the Sidur, right after the blessings of uh, the morning. <coughs> most Siduri, most uh, prayer books has this part called Tikkun Chatzot. It's a very, very uh, high prayer uh, that opens all the gates of heaven uh, and usually we do it on midnight however in this time of Venom Etzarim those three weeks there is a custom to say this Tikkun Chatzot in the midday means after approximately 1 1 p.m. Uh, we have time up until the sunset which is like almost six hours uh, uh, yeah six hours five hours uh, that we can say this Tikkun Chatzot <coughs> And uh, we sit on the floor, it's good to have a carpet or something, sit on that. And just read Tikkun Rachel, there's two parts of Tikkun Chatzot, Tikkun Rachel and Tikkun Le'ah. Just read this Tikkun Rachel part and, and this is, will uh, bring a lot of blessing to ourselves. And by doing that basically, we are um, taking an action, mourning on the uh, temple and Bezat Hashem, this is... Another tikkun chatzot that each one of us will do will bezat Hashem bring the the, the real redemption. Uh,